Hello peeps, I'm back. This is Kimberly with Purpose and welcome to my channel. This is part two to this um, video. Um, I'm a little bit hoarse, you all. I have uh, got a cold. And um, yeah, so I sort of lost my voice. Uh, but anyway, I was uh, talking about this Etowah Indian Mounds uh, Stake Historic Site, um, this article in particular. And um, I was just trying to understand this history it's like everything is very vague about the ethnicity of the people that were um at who built the mounds it's like they scale over it every time i've been reading up and i've been trying to find out who they are they mentioned that they the original people that was in this area that started the mounds were the um paleo indians the, the um the Paleo Indians, I believe. Um, and if you look at that, I saw a chart in this book that I was telling you all about. Um, it describes the uh, the different. Here it is, right here. The yeah, Paleo Indians, Paleo Indians. And um, here's the chart. I don't know if you can see it. I told you all about this book. I'll probably put a uh, the title of this book. Um, it's through the National Parks, uh, the National Monuments of Georgia National Park Service um, and the U.S. Department of Interior Affairs. It's called the Archaeological Research Series. And this is book number three. And um, they have this chart here of the Indians, but they're very vague about their ethnic, the ethnic backgrounds. Um, they don't, the one thing I do know for sure is the Paleo Indians are the Aborigines. They are the first. So they do mention them. But then they go in and explain the archaic, the woodlands, the Mississippians, and all of that. And um, they mention in this article here that in uh, 1540, that um, agrees that there was a Mississippian culture and there was a decline in the Etowah mounds. So the question is, who are these people? And a lot of, I noticed that also the artwork that I've been looking at are always artwork that's after the 14, the 1540s when the people started disappearing. All the artwork they show that depicts the people in the area always after the 1500s is usually around 17, 1800s. And all of them tend to look mongoloids or myths or biracial or something, but they never show the original people. That's why I'm sort of inclined to believe that the original people, since they mentioned they were Paleo Indians, that they more than likely enslaved them or captured them. And because they were very knowledgeable about the land and they were farmers. They mentioned this in the article um, that they were farmers uh, and knew how to cultivate the land. So that's what I think. I believe the Europeans came in and enslaved these folks. And because they already knew how to grow and harvest plants, they probably stole their land, their farmland. They already had. Now, I have read, read some stories and accounts about how Europeans were starving when they first came into the New World and they had guns and they used it against the indigenous people and stole their farmland because they already had crops and kept them from keeping the crops that they farmed. And so, yeah, I believe that's what happened. And there was no, you know, it just doesn't make no sense to me about a sudden decline. When Europeans show up, I think that they just um, killed and and probably enslaved the indigenous people. That's what I think. And I was left off on this part here about um, this passage here by uh, Cornelius. He's a congressional minister. And he was talking about how he couldn't believe that the descendants of these people, you know, which are the aborigines, more than likely the slaves, because they already proven there wasn't that many slaves that were brought over from Africa to the Americas. So what they did was just pretty much to capture the Aborigines and they built these mounds. I really do. I believe they built the mounds because I believe the Mongolo Indians was in, in the plains. The Aborigines were on, on the East Coast. 
And these, uh, a lot of these mounds are found on along the East Coast where the Aborigines were from. So it just makes sense. And I believe a lot of the artwork that they painted have been whitewashed to try to show this false narrative that Mongols were the only Indians here in the Americas in the United States. When actually the Aborigines were here too, they just pretty much erased us from the history books. But let's continue with this article. It says, settlers understood the Creek Indians and later the Cherokee Indians called this site Hightower, possibly Etowa or Etowa City. The name Etowa may also be corrupt of this word, corruption of this word. A Cherokee village takes its name from these mounds, the high tower roads, and used to transport the Sapita from the areas of present-day Kingston, Georgia. History of Kingston, Georgia to Savannah after 1808, and it ran by this ancient Mississippian mound-building city. <coughs> okay. They go on and explain uh, the background between the, about the names of the mounds and where it originates and trying to pinpoint where it came from. But let's continue. In 1838, Colon Colonel Lewis uh, Tomlin purchased the land that contained the mounds. It was remained in the family for 125 years. He permitted people who wanted to see the access to this property. One such person was William Sherman. <coughs> And um, along the unfinished western of the Atlantic Railroad bed in 1844, Sherman was interested in Tumlin's Mound because he had seen similar mounds in his home state of Ohio. That's another area where the Aborigines were. Was in Ohio. These mounds were found all along here. And it says here, during the 1870s, Clarence Johnson led an excavation of Mount C. He published the conclusion of the landmark change the mound builders were viewed. Although increased knowledge of this proof of his conclusions, the flood waters of 1886 exposed enough bones and stones of pottery and brass. Cyrus Thomas sent an investigator from the Smithsonian <laughs> in, in 1825 Warren King Moorhead of Phillips Academy excavated a portion of the Tumbling Indian Mounds, the name commonly applied to the area at the time. So um, they did, it looked like they were a little sloppy on the, they, um, on the excavations, you know, with flood waters, you know. So I sort of, you know, deteriorated the material, I would think, but yeah. <coughs> Let's continue on. Sorry about that. The area purchased by the land, I'm going to skip on down. It says right here, the area that was purchased in Georgia was in 1953, 30,000. Here in Tomlin, uh, of the Etowah, Etowah Indian Mound from 1953 until 1981. He was interested in preserving the mounds, continues to his day. He donated additional land to conclude the park in 1994 and 1995. In 2000, the park was named as one of the most threatened in the nation. Wow. See? This, they, it, you know, it's just so sad. Um, it was more to reading there. I'm going to have to stop here because I don't have as much time, but I just wanted to show how they say that the um, park is threatened. I'm not surprised they said due to flooding. But I feel like they weren't proactive enough. That's why I sort of feel like this, this Indian Mound might be Aborigine. More than likely, it's Aborigine. It's linked to us as African Americans, the AKA, the Aborigines of the United States. Why they do sloppy work? What better way is to just not excavate it quickly enough? Because you don't want to prove that they were originally the Aborigines of this land. No, so they could continue the narrative of gray washing, white washing um, history and make it look like that we don't have a history. But if you want to read the rest of this, I'll put a link below. Um, it goes more into the grounds. And please like this video and don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, peace. And be blessed. Bye-bye.